G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now Power Automate allows us to save so much time by being able to automate a lot of repetitive tasks. Uh, now that doesn't just mean at a, an organizational level, you know, those uh, re requests for approval or leave processes or expense claims or those type of things. There's so much we can achieve from a personal productivity side uh, that many may not know. Now I've been uh, recently uh, being involved in a, a lot of Discord communities, Discord servers uh, and, and things like that. And one of the bots that you can add to these Discord servers allows uh, for scheduling events. Now, um, uh, not a downside, but the only way that uh, the only calendar that some of these bots um, integrate with is a Google calendar. So whenever I need to add an event or be reminded of an event, it adds it to my Google calendar. So what I wanted to set out to achieve was without um, needing to visit two different places to see what's going on during, throughout the day, I just want to be able, an easy way to be able to, whenever something is created in my Google Calendar, create that same event in my Outlook Calendar as well, so that I've only got one place to visit. Now, Power Automate has uh, some uh, out-of-the-box triggers that uh, integrate in with the, your Google Calendar, and also then, obviously, we can create an event in our Outlook Calendar. So uh, I just wanted to share, there's a couple of little nuances uh, with that uh, trigger itself and being able to create events in your Outlook calendar that I just wanted to share. So if you do have a need to uh, you know, create, uh, if something happens in your Google Calendar, create something in your Outlook calendar, let's step through the process and see how we can get that up and running uh, so that it hopefully will uh, save you some time uh, and also just give you one place to look at your events. So let's dive in and have a look. You can see here, I'm in the Power Automate screen uh, on the homepage here. And you can see on the bottom right-hand corner here, we've got um, under popular services, we've got Google Calendar. Now, when we jump into this uh, this service here, you can see that we've got a number of different triggers. So a trigger means when something happens, then let's take an action on that. And the, the trigger that I want to select here is when an event is added to a calendar. So I'll click this trigger and then it's automatically going to open up this page for me. Now I have already gone and configured a connection. All right, so you can add a new connection to your Google account. You just have to authenticate with your account. What happens here is that I can now select uh, and it will automatically, depending on the connection that I've chosen, uh, bring back my uh, calendars. And you can see here, this is my main calendar. So when an event is added to this calendar, I want to create an event in my Outlook calendar. And again, because I'm logged in here as Megan, it's automatically going to pick up my calendar. And you can see I've only got one calendar here uh, to choose from, but in the subject line, I'm going to use the event title from the Google Calendar event. And then also here, the start time, I'm now going to uh, use the start time from the, the Google Calendar event and the same thing with the end time and we'll select the end time here. Now time zone, let's choose Melbourne. And you can see here that I do have a lot of other options here for when I'm creating my event in my Outlook calendar. Now I won't fill out all of these, but what I will fill out is the reminder. So I wanna be reminded 30 minutes prior and I will set uh, the reminder on to yes. All right, and that's basically it. Now there is a little bit of a trick here. So when I go to save that, you'll notice that I will get an error when it's being saved. Um, and there'll be a big red bar that comes across the top here. So we need to go and just do a two more steps. And I found this little workaround on a forum when I was uh, looking up this error. So I just wanted to show you how we can get around that. So we can see here that this validation uh, failed on the start, uh, the, the start date. So what we can do here, Let's add, I'm gonna add two more actions. So what I'm going to do is add an action for convert date, um, which is uh, somewhere here. 
Let's convert time zone. This is the same thing. So if we go base time, let's choose this start date time. Now the source time zone here, I'm going to select Melbourne and I'm going to keep this destination time zone the same here as well. So let's keep that the same. And now the format string here I've found uh, to, to work with sortable date time pattern. And let's choose this one here. Now I also need to add another action. Same thing, convert time zone. And we'll do that to the end date as well. So the base time, let's look at end date, source, let's go Melbourne and destination. You would obviously change this to be whatever your time zone is. Format string, let's go to sortable date time pattern. And now what we need to do is change these. So the start time, let's remove the Google Calendar start time and end time. But now what we wanna do is the start time here of the converted time and the end time of the converted time zone number two. Let's now go ahead and save that. And that will now successfully save. Now what we're gonna do is just create a, uh, an event in the Google Calendar and let's just see that flow run uh, and it will create an event uh, in the Outlook Calendar. Okay, so here we are in my Google Calendar um, and now what we're going to do is just create an event uh, in this calendar. So let's just click on here, um, important events. And you can see I can set my time zones and all that sort of stuff, but just for the purposes here, we'll just hit save. So that's from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Now, what's going to happen now is that flow that we've just created is going to trigger, all right? So let's just jump back into the flow here and we will just wait a couple of seconds and we'll get this flow to run. Okay, so there we go. The flow has now uh, successfully run. Now let's take a look at the Outlook calendar. So if I jump into Megan's calendar now, you can see that this is uh, her calendar. Let's just refresh this page now. And we'll see that that event has been added to the calendar. And you can see there on the right hand side, I've got important event from 1.30 to 2.30, it's got the, the title from the, uh, the, out, the the Google Calendar has come through as well. Uh, so that's now uh, been added to my Outlook Calendar. So a really nice, easy way, successful outcome for me. I know you can do a lot more with that. I know it's not in sync, but all I was trying to achieve there was it, when anything is added to my Google Calendar, I just want that pushed to my Outlook Calendar as well so that I've got a, um, a representation of that in my main calendar that I use every single day. So I hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching. See you next time.